going on, all you wild mind flayer enthusiasts? It's your two favorite uncles back here for Cinefellas. We're going to be back talking about the brand new season, record breaking season of Stranger Things. Stranger Things. We've been patiently awaiting for it. It's been pushed back. This has been three years since the last season was released, season three, but it's finally returned. Uh, the young children that we remembered are now 18, 19 year old kids. And- <laughs> They're finally hitting high school in the TV show, but, uh, you know, really excited for the show to be returning. We've got seven episodes. Each episode is a bit longer than the previous seasons, or about, what, hour and 15, hour and a half, I think was the final. Definitely longer. They felt much like a movie, and they went really dark this season. Yes, we're getting a lot of horror in Stranger Things 4, and like you mentioned, those kids are no longer kids anymore. Everybody looks more grown up. We've seen Finn Wolfhard lately in uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. We see what he looks like older. But the rest of the kids, even Will, (laughs) it's funny seeing Will with his Beatles haircut talking, you know, and you just remember him being the original OG kid uh, in the Upside Down, you know, Will Will, uh, Byers that started it all off. And now they're all teenagers. They're looking older. And it involves the high school theme this year. It's all about uh, them. You know, it's about 11 and, uh, you know, the other kids being separated, they're all moved away from each other, going to different schools. Uh, and it's about like how things have been going between them. It's, you know, Eleven's finding it hard to make friends at school. She's getting picked on a lot. And that's really where it picks up from the first episode. We see Eleven and the kids in school and we see, you know, her getting teased and made fun of. The big thing uh, going on this season is bullying in, in many shapes and forms in this season especially with 11. She's uh, in California now. She's with um, Will and then his older brother, Jonathan, living with um, Winona Ryder's character. And they were living in California. They kind of split up the crew here. You know, you have the rest of the kids back in Hawkins, Indiana, going to high school. They're all nerds, getting picked on. They're all getting bullied in some way. So they're not doing so hot. And they're also separated. And you see them kind of drift away as friends, too. As they get older, we get a lot of great moments with Mike, you know, visiting Eleven and Will, um, you know, in California, we get to visit from him and we we can kind of see the relationships fraying there. You know, he used to be really close with Will, but now he's more there for his girlfriend Eleven to see how things are going. And she's kind of lying to him at first, you know, not telling him the truth. She makes it sound like everything's going really great for her. But in reality, she's getting tormented every day and she's about to break. You know, we see some moments where she's about to snap there in the beginning and we get an ultra violent, you know, beginning episode that comes with a warning before, of course, with the school shootings and all that, you know, terror that's gone around the country here. They had to throw that warning on. So it feels very relevant for the times, you know, bullying rampant, you know, with social media, people are bullying other people 24 hours a day now, not just at school, but it just keeps going. And then we see these characters kind of going through that in high school. Uh, some moments that harken back to 80s films and this, this being in uh, 1986 this season, uh, we get some, you know, some scenes in the gymnasium when they're playing basketball. You know, I was waiting for Teen Wolf to come out. And, right. You know, it, uh, it also reminded me of Firestarter uh, 2 with 11 this year and trying to, you know, regain her powers and everything. The main story revolves around, you know, some crazy things happening again with this crew and being haunted by what happened uh, back at Starcourt Mall, you know, what, six months ago, as it's supposed to be in the story. But, you know, it's been three years since <laughs> Stranger Things 3. So a lot of times passed. So but we are following all these characters that we knew then. And it doesn't take long, you know, to refamiliarize with, you know, the crew and what they're going through. And, you know, this time they're going to face a a really evil, dangerous character that were introduced in the first one with some really brutal uh, kill scenes at the end. And it has a lot to do with psychological trauma in this. And that's how the villain of Vecna comes in to uh, terrorize the kids. And, you know, they're going to have to group together and band together like they always do to to try to defeat this evil uh, that's, you know, seemingly once again coming from the upside down every season. They think that they're able to, you know, defeat the evil, but something bigger and badder comes along in this season. It's uh, Vecna. From Demi Gorgans to the Mind Flayer to Vecna. I mean, each villain gets more and more badass each season. And this this season takes a lot of, you know, love from Nightmare on Elm Street, um, The Exorcist, too, that I can think of at the top of my head. But once you got, finally get the introduction to this character, Vecna, just the practical effects on this 
that guy is really, really well done. I think they spent a lot of the budget on the effects for the season. Just looks really good. Really scary. Definitely the scary season to date, but with Vecna, get the introduction of that. It's pretty eerie. And teenagers start dying off, like in most horror flicks, and trying to figure out who's behind all this, having to do uh, with the upside down. Basically, the backstory of Vecna, who he really is. That's right. And this season also picks up the pieces from where we left Hopper, you know, being seemingly blown up by that explosion. But, you know, Joyce has never lost faith. You know, she knows that he's survived. You know, she says she's never, she didn't, never saw the body. So he's got to be out there somewhere. And of course he is, he's being held by the Russians there. They've shaved his head and made him do hard labor all day. And, you know, it's, they're trying to break him along with the other prisoners. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a plan that comes along that involves another character that comes in the form of Murray. Uh, you know, the character that we saw, you know, in the previous seasons, he returns to help out Joyce. You know, he believes her that that Topper is out there still. And we get some great moments with the two of them working together. This season's a lot about, you know, having to work together with, you know, not people that you've always been around and work together with. You know, we see some different pairing of the kids in this one. We see, you know, Steve and, and um, Nancy together in this season, a lot together and some moments there where it glimpses at maybe a relationship budding there. Um, but uh, yeah, they have to work together to get Hopper out. And that's the side story here. We have the story with the kids and Vecna, and then you have Hopper trying to get out of Russia. And, uh, you know, the upside down is there in Russia too, following the aftermath of last season where, you know, the Demogorgon, they have some some monsters there that have made it there and they keep in this cage basically and they unleash it on uh you know the prisoners that they have every once in a while so it's these competing storylines but it all has to do with vecna in the end and these seven episodes and how these kids are gonna figure out a way to you know get each other out of this this craziness that's happening in the upside down the whole supply of the russia didn't i don't know it kind of dragged on for me I know they're trying to build it up, you know, with like getting Hopper out of there and coming back to help them take out Vecna probably in the last two episodes. But I don't know, it dragged out a bit. But uh, the main focal point, the main storyline here with the kids in two different areas, dealing with this Vecna character and their relationships that are, you know, deteriorating away as they get older. You know, there's a lot on the line this season. They up the stakes here. It's much scarier. Effects look beautiful. I think the budget wasn't like 40 million per episode or something. Yes. Insane. Yeah. yeah you could tell they did all the effects. Definitely not the outfits and the haircuts, but <laughs> the, the visual effects, practical yeah. effects look top notch here. You know, and the kids coming together and trying to figure this all out. Um, also having to do with this character, Eddie Munson, basically kids start dying off. So they pin it on this, you know, geek uh, metal head. He's the head of the Hellfire Club, which is like a Dungeons and Dragons club that Lucas Dustin and Mike are part of, but he's like the leader of this D and D group, and uh, the kids start dying. So it's like, oh yeah, it's the freak of the school that's killing everybody. But all the kids know that it has to do with the Spectre character, and they're trying to crack it and put a stop to it and show the townspeople that you know Eddie Munson's innocent. He didn't kill these teenagers. There's no way he could do this. The way the people die, essentially, they like, go up in the air and they freaking bones are breaking their face sinks in their heads turn much like reagan from the exorcist really eerie gruesome scenes in the season but you know the whole town pinning it on eddie you know to find out it's really some supernatural force yeah and it's mainly from this kid jason the head of the basketball team you know the town athlete and the star and he's really good on the microphone you know we see him in the beginning at a pep rally and then later on you know he's kind of talking to the parents of the town trying to get the town to band together to go after eddie um so yeah you have your cliche jocks there and they're kind of they're the ones that are mainly pinning it on eddie and then they get the cops involved and um yeah so there's a lot to do with this new character who's pretty cool i like his character i wish we got to see more of them actually you know rather than just kind of go back and forth between them. But, uh, you know, overall this season, I had a great time. Um, I really enjoyed the horror aspect. We've seen a lot more science fiction in the previous three seasons, but it's been going more towards horror. And this one was the first, you know, a balls to the wall horror season for season four. It's getting darker as the kids grow up. Um, one thing I will say here, it's, you know, it's supposed to take six months, takes place six months after the last 
season of Stranger Things, it's kind of it kind of takes you out of it seeing the kids growing up now, just <laughs> knowing how long it's taken everything to film, how long this has been, you know, waiting to be released. Um, it's just some of the magic's taken out by them not being kids anymore. It would have been nice if they were able to film this a little close together in years. But I mean, that's the story the Duffer brothers are going with. They're going to see these kids turn into the teenagers and ultimately defeat evil. So that's one thing that kind of, you know, some of the magic of them being kids and the wonder was kind of lost for me in this season, you know, where this just felt like a more mature kind of horror movie, but that's not all bad news. It's just like, it's different. It's a different season for sure. It's got a different uh, tone pace and a different villain to go with it. Uh, we see some good uh, returns from, you know, a couple of characters that we saw 11 deal with, you know, Papa, played by Matthew Modine, you know, the head of the Hawkins lab here that's, you know, performing all these experiments on these children and 11. And we also see Uncle Paul Reiser <laughs> come back and, you know, he's the one that has to get 11 on board for this uh, project that they have set up to try to, you know, channel her power to defeat, uh, you know, what's going on with the upside down and the evil in it. This is a more mature season. The episodes are really long. It's kind of like a mini movie every episode. Um, so it, the, the season, the first seven episodes that we've seen, you know, it's it's like seeing, you know, a few movies there. And with the last two are even supposed to be longer, you know, one being in excess of two hours and one pretty, another one pretty close to two hours. So even though, you know, we're going to get more episodes in this first volume season, it's setting it up for two, you know, gigantic movie sized episodes to finish off this season. And I can't wait to see where it goes with the way things end up. I was really surprised at the twist ending there. I didn't see it coming. I should have, you know, kind of seeing how he's been featured throughout the season, but you know, it just didn't click. So they, they did a good job disguising what they do by the end. You'll, you'll be surprised by that. Um, the effects, everything, the budgets, you know, you can see everything on screen now. They spent a lot for the effects and a lot of it looks really awesome. There's only a few scenes where I was like, ah, oh, that's, you know, just CGI garbage, you know, some creatures uh, flying in the air, but everything looks, you know, very expensive. Like they put all the money on it. Um, you just have to deal with the bad haircuts on the kids and clothes, like you mentioned. But uh, overall, I had a great time with this season. It's reinvigorated the Kate Bush song, Running Up the Hill, climbing the charts there. I know it's been in my head, so I downloaded the song. Sure, most of the people did. Um, so with that being said, Stranger Things Volume 4, I'm going to give it a four out of five Charlie Heaton hair pieces. Oh, Charlie. It looks real. <laughs> yeah, like you were saying, yeah, it took me out of it, especially the first episode was really clunky. Like something fell off about the first episode, but it got better and better throughout the season. I don't know if we're just trying to refamiliarize ourselves with these characters, even though, you know, they're much older than they were back in season three. Finn Wolfhard looks completely different. Uh, <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown looks different too. You know, they're just older now. Happens obviously with age, but it kind of took me out, out of it in the beginning. Wasn't into it as much as I wanted to be, but I, you know, I didn't give up on it. It got way better. I think episode four is my favorite with Mad Max running in the upside down and that song running up that hill Kate Bush, which is, Fantastic song. I didn't even know there was an original song. There's like a cover song I heard a few years ago, but yeah. I didn't realize that. So, but great song. It really set the mood for that episode of where they're going with this season. It's better and better. The introduction of Vecna having to do with this facility with Eleven getting her powers back. I will say the de-aging of Eleven they did on this looked really, really shitty. <laughs> like when yeah. she's supposed to be like 12 years old and it's really obvious, but that's just that's a minor obvious. complaint. But yeah, the rest of the facility was pretty crazy especially a bunch of kids dying and putting that uh message up in the first episode that's pretty wild what that all has to do with and then finding out who Vecna really is that cool little twist at the end was really fantastic visual effects this season were top notch one of the best parts they went about this season a different approach more horror themed and it really paid off really well done final two coming back in July so re really excited for that another great season of Stranger Things well worth the wait it's been three years, but I'm excited to, you know, dive back into these characters in Hawkins, Indiana, and where they're going to be going in the final two episodes. So that being said, I'll give season four of Stranger Things a four out of five Millie Bobby Brown hair pieces. It's my prerogative. So what did you guys think of Stranger Things volume four? Did you guys like the horror elements of this season? Leave a comment in the comment section below and don't forget to click. 
subscribe. Also make sure you're following along with us on our website, cinephilas.com, all our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We have a fellas giveaway going on right now that we just announced the other day. So make sure to check out that video. We are giving away the Batman in 4k, the digital code to one lucky follower. So watch that video and find out how to enter. Maybe I'll put a little link to the video right up here. Check that out and enter for a copy, 4k copy of the Batman. Also check out our YouTube channel. We've been posting a lot of videos lately. Me and this guy and the rest of the crew talking movies, TV shows, and entertainment business. We've got you know, more interviews, podcasts coming up very soon. So definitely check out our YouTube channel. Well, it's going to be time to head back to the upside down once again on July 1st for the final two episodes of Stranger Things 4. I can't wait to return, but you know, just just as much as I can't wait to go back and watch those two episodes, it's going to suck to have to wait till season five now because, you know, it's going to be another couple of years. So as much fun as it is to binge, it's like, ah, I wish I could have spent, you know, some more time with the show, but eventually I'll go back and rewatch it all and pace it out a little better. You know, it's the kind of show where you have to binge it because your friends are watching it. Obviously we want to review it, but uh, yeah, it would be nice to stick in Hawkins for more than, uh, you know, three days. (laughs) Right. Every time they release a season, we binge it in like two days. So yeah. we're always anxiously awaiting to watch that and binge it and talk about it with you guys. So it's always, always fun. These wild boys are back to head to the upside down. Now we've got some other TVs and movies to review. So until the next Cinefellas TV review, I'm uncle Henry. That's my good mate, Logan. Cheese. Cheese.